You are a unique individual with the power to change lives just by being who you are, sharing your wisdom, and telling your story. Welcome everybody to Dense Pen Live, where we find interesting people who make the world a better place and ask them to share their story. We have a, an extra special episode today. We have invited Mr. Andre Smith Jr. back to, uh, to our Facebook land videos. And uh, Andre <laughs> is a book coach. And uh, he is also the author of uh, Facing Racism and his new book, which is Write Your Book. Whoa, sorry, my computer just went crazy. Uh, Write Your Book in No Time. Andre, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me back on. I swear this is becoming a regular thing. It is. It's on purpose. <laughs> I love it, though. I love it. I love your energy. I love getting the chance to be here and interact with you and your audience. This is awesome. Awesome. We love having you. And this it's very, I feel like a very high value add for our audience because we're going to be talking about, well, you and I talk about different aspects of storytelling and getting your point across and writing and all that stuff. You and I could geek out forever on that. Uh, but today we are actually going to be talking about the difference between a, uh, what makes a book good and what makes a book life changing. So let's get started on this. This is going to be fun. Let's give it a, 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 like a basics here. What makes a, a, a book good? Basics. Keep it simple. <laughs> so the way I think about a book, it comes from a, a kind of an academic sort of educational background. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of parse it up into three kind of categories. Um, content, form, and mechanics. Mm -hmm. You know, I would add in then a fourth category, which is impact, which starts mm -hmm. touching on kind of the other side of it. But what makes a book good for me um, in terms of content? Does the content make sense? Does it match what the book claims to be about? Is it relevant to its intended reader? You know, form, what form does this book take? Can I pick up this book and understand it? Do I have to read it backwards? Do I have to jump between chapters? How am I actually taking in this, this material? And then of course, is it, you know, physical or digital or audio? You know, and I'm not an elitist that will say a book only appears on pages and binding because historically there are lots of texts that would be considered books now that did not have that format some were on like things like turtle shells and animal skins and all kinds of things so a book as we know it today is a very modern thing mm -hmm. um and then of course mechanics is it written well um does it follow the conventions of writing and composition and then in terms of impact what does it leave me with do i have a positive feeling or a negative feeling did i learn something did i grow in some way did they expand me? Even if I already knew the material, was it enjoyable? And could I recommend it to more people? So that's kind of how I frame what makes a book good. So there are some technical things that's like, okay, objectively, is this a good or a bad book? But then subjectively, you know, what was my experience with it? Right, exactly. So what do you think? I know I completely agree with you. Uh, we had a, a slight back and forth about what makes a, a book good a little while ago. And uh, you know, it's it's not just content because I, I would argue that uh, I mean you you just said those three parts, but yeah, it's it's not going to be just content because you could have the most interesting content told in the worst way, and no one would want to read it. Um, conversely, you can have the most boring content written about in an engaging way, and everyone would want to read it, whether or not you're interested in it. You know, so would you um, say a, a book is, is at least part of what makes a book good is um, whether or not people want to read it. Yes, exactly. Like, how does it pull? Does it pull your reader in? You know what I mean? Does it? This is going to your point on impact. You know, do for me what one of the things I love is getting lost in a book. You know, and if it if you can lose if I can get lost in a book that makes to me that's like a good book. <laughs> and you know the funny thing about that statement in particular is um so while I was doing some research because yes I researched my post for yesterday because I was I was nerding out when I should have been doing other things. <laughs> um, but I, there's a lady, her name is, I think, Leah Price, and she is an instructor at Harvard. And one of the things she mentions on the history of books is that books for the large portion of their history were more about, they were more utilitarian and they were more about function. 
mm -hmm. and being searchable. There were sources of knowledge. And the idea of getting lost in a book really didn't emerge until 17, 1800s at the earliest. Right. And it was, again, kind of an idle thing versus business or, or usefulness. If you read a book that someone could get lost in, or if you even took the time to get lost in a book, you were wasting mm -hmm. time. So I think that's right. so interesting how that has kind of shifted for us now. Well, it, yeah, I mean, at that point, what really happened was that books became more accessible, more, more, um, you know, able to be gotten. <laughs> and, uh, and also the, the, the population became more literate. Um, so that you then you then had like a, a, a transformation of literature into something that could entertain the way, you know, the, you know, at some point, the Greeks put together theater, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. At some point, storytelling becomes literature. I have to do more research, though, especially as a literature major. But I'm just, again, <laughs> so fascinated about the idea of how, um, how the narrative became the novel. I mean, mm -hmm. we have essentially... If you look back historically, the earliest storytellers were the bards, the the keepers, even the the shamans. They were the keepers of history. Mm -hmm. And so there's an oral tradition that becomes kind of a precursor to poetry, which yeah. then becomes theater. But between the two, they kind of still have their own sort of space. You know, Shakespeare was not known for writing books; he wrote plays. Right. So but even, you can read them in book form. <laughs> you can you can? And that's the crazy part is. is it wasn't until again the the early 1700s where the format shifted into what we would start to see as the kind of beginning of a novel. That's a whole other discussion. It's like ah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 Okay. Let's get back on track. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. You and I can nerd out any on anything that has to do with literature. Um, okay. So going back to a book that makes an impact our particular audiences we we help people write books whether it's you know like you you help people to actually they put the pen to paper and i collect their information and put it in such a way that makes it interesting for people to read and it has a logical flow to it <laughs> so I that people don't have to admire your work by the way <laughs> i admire your work um yeah I, i'm not a teacher <laughs> I would get so frustrated. Anyway, the point is our, that this, those are the people who are our audience, people who want to write a book either themselves or like somehow get a book written even if they can't for whatever reason themselves. So let's talk about what makes a book impactful because that's, that's the audience that we're going for, people who, who want to help other people, who want to get their knowledge and ideas out there and uh and you know get well you know use the book also to promote themselves and and to you know get their name out there get uh get in, get, get in front of people <clears throat> i should take a speech class <laughs> <laughs> i hear you on that i took a speech class this semester and i feel so much better about things now <laughs> so what makes a book impactful in my mind it is both it's largely subjective, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing you can do as an author to make a book more impactful. That is a myth. And I've had several discussions around this recently around, you know, is it entirely up to the reader or is it in the technique? And I would argue that it all comes down to the technique. And I would tell. Because there are elements, as you mentioned before, that make the text usable and meaningful. It's not just content. If I were to put 1,500 words and as block text on the screen right now, like some really poorly formatted websites from like the early 2000s, <laughs> no paragraph breaks, no formatting, no margins. Right off the bat, it's failed. Yeah. It's not gonna make an impact. Now, let's say that we put in paragraph X, we format it and it's readable now. Mm -hmm. And we have good language. So we, we jumped through, it's been through some copy edits and whatnot, but it's still not useful. Why? Because the content's not interesting. You've written not just a textbook, but a manual 
I've given you a manual of, of just information or on the history of something and nobody wants that. Even if it's the most useful resource, there's a reason why people don't just read dictionaries or <laughs> encyclopedias or anthologies. People have some sort of need to be entertained or related to. And so what makes the book impactful is how well an author can tell a story in a way that's relatable, that can draw people. And we talked about last time, we talked about the idea of the hook. What can hook people in to the material and then hold them there? What's gonna hold them there within the book, especially a book that's nonfiction, mm. is going to be relevant material to them. You can write a book about anything, but if you want it to make a difference for somebody, you have to write it to them. And the way that you do that is choosing material that they care about, choosing topics and questions and answering the questions that they want answered, why they picked up this book. You know, my last book, Write Your Book in No Time, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Finishing a High Impact Book While Running Your Business. Self-explanatory in the title for a reason, but that title makes a promise to that reader that by the time they finish these pages, they will know how to get their book done. And they will probably be able to see themselves in the pages as a high functioning entrepreneur who wants to get a book written. If I don't write any of that into the book and I just spew all of my historical knowledge of what is a book, that book is not gonna be impactful to them. Right. And so that's kind of where I kind of draw it from. You know, what is What makes a book life-changing? Do you know your audience enough? And do you care to write towards them enough in such a way that's going to change their lives? Even if you're writing a memoir, which is again, a different art, it's how you tell your story in a way that people can then move into. Um, Brene Brown talks about vulnerability. It's the same thing in books. How much more vulnerable and human can you be in your book? That's what I think. What are, what are your thoughts? Oh, well, there's a lot there. <laughs> um, yes, I think that going with you, what you were just saying about talking to your audience and, and, you know, not just making it relevant for me, something that's going to have the most impact is when someone starts speaking about something that's personal to them. Um, so for instance, I'm sorry, there's a cat. I don't know if you can hear, but because there's a cat yelling in the background and she does it all the time and uh, there's no reason. There's no reason. <laughs> she just likes to yell anyway. Um, yeah, so I would I would argue that the most impactful book that is written uh, that is a nonfiction book, not a not a fiction book, because fiction books are, I mean, honestly, a different animal in, in a lot of ways, and I love them. But um, I would say writing from a place you're writing to an audience that is basically you. And that's how you're going to know how to impact the audience the most. And I would like to take, and this is not about a book, but I would like to take, for example, the work I'm doing with. Um, with uh, a, a series of videos I'm calling Becoming Untethered. And what I'm doing is using my, yeah, my experience as someone who was depressed for a very long time, um, who, who has somehow made it out of that depression. Um, I'm putting that forward to people who, I mean, I, like, I get goosebumps just talking about it. You know, when, when a writer, when someone who is, is, is expressing something that is close to their soul, that is when, the impact is made. I'm reaching out to other people who maybe don't have any hope. You know what I mean? Maybe don't know, like, okay, like I know when I was depressed, I didn't think there, there was a way out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, I want to show people that there is. And then those people who feel like, you know, okay, I fucked everything up or whatever, excuse my language. <laughs> I'm from Boston. Um, you know, like, and, and so there's proud. no hope. I can't, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing I can do. It's too late or um, you know, just a, a million different things that, that, that you put in your mind that makes it so you can't move forward. I'm addressing them because that's where I was. And this is what I would have wanted or I would have needed to get out of my depression. And then mm -hmm. once you come out of the depression, you have this whole new challenge of dealing with your emotions and your thoughts that are still the same as what you had before, in a different way. And that's what I'm exploring in these videos. 
And that's what I'm hoping makes an impact on people. That I am, I am catering to a very specific audience. Mm-hmm. And I'm speaking from a place of personal knowledge. Absolutely. And I would, I would definitely second that. I, I wanted to go there, but I'm like, I've talked so much. Let me like shut up for a minute. But <laughs> I would 100% second that, you know. And I would personally classify that as, again, part of form and technique. You know, you can tell your story, but are you being vulnerable? Are you opening up? Are you sharing yourself in your story? Right. Are you Overlate. being real and honest? Mm-hmm. So I, I love that. I think I think we're getting we're getting at some some really cool angles here as terms of what's a good book, what's an impactful book. I do have a question that kind of comes to my mind. I'd love your insight on is you know, by default, does an impactful book qualify as a good book um that's that's getting into a philosophical argument of what is good what do you mean by good (laughs) keeping it super simple and 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 low to mid-level you know when i think about it there are again so many ways to write a technically good book and then you know there's that that feeling you know where you say Oh yeah, it was a good book. I, I don't know if I would recommend it, but it was a good book. Mm-hmm. Was it really a good book to you then? Right. Or are you just saying that because you know, well, it was an author who wrote a book. It, it's it's got to be good. And I didn't have a negative reaction, so it, at least it wasn't <laughs> bad. <laughs> That's a low bar. <laughs> That's a low bar. It wasn't bad. That's a good book. <laughs> okay, that 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 is something there. So. I, I had a discussion and someone mentioned before, you know, any book that, that can make an impact on a reader is good. Would you say that's true? I would argue that a book that made an impact on a reader would have to be good. If that makes any sense. You know what I mean? Like It makes perfect sense to me. I <laughs> hear exactly what you're saying. By default, it would have to be good. To yeah. make the impact. Right, to make the impact. And I would argue as well that that would mean it would have to be told in such a way as to be understood, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. digested easily, mm-hmm. um, have a personal element to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I would, I would argue that in some way, whatever fashion, it would have to be well-written enough that the the content is not only understandable but relatable it it catches you and in order to Mm -hmm. do that I would argue that it would have to be well-written absolutely I would agree and I want to kind of bring it back around to what you mentioned earlier with um an audience of people who who want to use their books in their business yeah um for that writer, for that author, I would suggest also that a book that makes an impact versus say a good book, because we've, as we discussed, a good book has a lot of other literary merits that, that kind of go into it. Impact is purely results driven. So mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say that you should only write to results, but think about the result that you're getting to your reader through mm-hmm. your writing. Mm-hmm. Like I mentioned for my own book, I, in the title itself, I made a promise to those readers that this is what they were going to explore, that they should be able to figure out how to write their book in no time. That is a result that I'm offering. So for the entrepreneur, you know, a book that makes an impact is not just a book that makes someone really go, wow, that was life-changing, but actually helps them to get a result and to think about yes. where they're going. Because you're, we're writing a lot of times in the not just self up but the how to space of yeah. self help. Mm-hmm. Someone picks up this book and they they have a question in mind, and the question that you have to ask when you're going to write is why would my my intended reader, not just someone or anyone, why would my intended reader want to pick up this book? It's the same question you ask when you're thinking about why would someone come to my business. If you are a digital marketer. And I'm coming to your business. I'm specifically coming because I probably need help with digital marketing. If you are a ghostwriter, 
I'm coming to you probably specifically because I want something written and either don't feel I have the skills to do it myself, don't feel like I have the time to do it myself, or I do, but I would rather have some expert who understands it do it for me. Mm-hmm. And so if then you were to write a book, Jen, on ghostwriting, you would have to then ask the question, are you writing a book to people who would want to use your ghostwriting services or to someone who wants to be a ghostwriter? Right, exactly. I mean, you definitely have to have to make that choice before you start writing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and, and so I think about impact, you know, it's that usefulness piece. What can someone then go and do with this book? Because I guarantee you, if you write a book that changes someone's life by solving a real problem for them, they're going to talk about it. They're going to put it on their shelf. They'll probably buy every other version of it and probably anything else you have to offer. If you write and one life-changing book. Exactly. And share it. And share it. That brings up a very important question for me. I want to ask you. It does. And it's the question that comes to my mind. A lot of times when I'm discussing the quality of a book, there are a lot of people who would suggest that it doesn't matter if your book is technically good, if the information is useful. I would make the suggestion, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, Mm -hmm. that the better the product, the more valuable and useful and likely to be encouraging and I forget my word here I'm sorry there's like 10,000 words in my head right now (laughs) the the more enticing it becomes and the more likely someone's going to recommend you and and it's going to gain more traction Mm -hmm. I would say versus a low quality quick production book Mm -hmm. what do you think all right a couple of thoughts hopefully I can keep them all in my head um one is that I really don't think, even if you have the best content in the world, if it's not constructed in a way that's easily digestible, it's not going to make an impact. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, even right now, I'm working on a book about uh, real estate investing, which as a ghostwriter, it it does, you know, it does, it it can be difficult when you're writing about something that you, you really don't have a lot of interest in. They're like, oh God. So right now I'm kind of wrestling with um, with a chapter that has a lot of dry information in it. Um, and I, I can put this information, honestly, like I put this information into a very digestible format. You know what I mean? Like bold, <laughs> bold words and then a different, a different, like a description afterwards. So it's easy to go through and you can get the information that you want. Um, That's, it's, for that kind of material, I think that would be how you have to, like you have to put that in a way that's digestible. Because it's not something people are gonna read for pleasure. (laughs) You know what I mean? And the the way, you know, like, I mean, there's only so much you can do with 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 definitions of different kinds of real estate investors or investing strategies or you know what I mean like you can put the, so let's bring that into the next point kind of bringing it all together like you can put personal stories in there um yeah you can you can put put personal stories in there that make it more interesting and 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 stuff like that and that takes a bit more savvy, um, which is a good point to bring up our upcoming workshop. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I will let you lead the charge there. What are we doing here? In January, we are having a three day, a free three day workshop in which we talk about how to write a book and how to use it to promote yourself. I am super excited about this because number one, I mean, it's, 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 this is what we do. I wouldn't be here if I didn't love it. But mm-hmm. on top of that, you know, we get a chance to talk about 
you know, what makes, just like we talked about here, what makes a book tick for both the business owner who may be writing the book mm -hmm. as well as the reader. So we've got a few days and I've got some notes here. So forgive me for taking a peek at the notes, but I'm super excited because, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, why write your book? You know, what is your offer? What is your purpose for writing? We're going to talk about, you know, storytelling, writing strategies. We're going to talk about, you know, how does one tell a story, specifically a story that sells, a story that engages and, you know, that word sale, sale and sells. It starts to make some people cringe, you know, I don't want to sell myself. I don't want to sell in a book. It's going to feel weird. No, no, no. There is a way to write your book that is persuasive and engaging and it motivates. It's, yeah. There's a motivating sequence in your book that we can talk about. Ah, ah. Can you see, can you see me shaking me though? <laughs> but um, I would also, uh, oh man, I just lost what I was gonna say. That's a bummer, go ahead. We're going to move right into, as Jen mentioned, you know, how the heck do you leverage this book? You know, you've got it written, you've got your ideas on the page. What the heck do you do with it? And how is it going to help you? You know, I'm all about helping the reader with a book, but let's be honest, half of us here also want some return on investment, some return on that time. How is this book going to help you? Exactly. So we'll talk about all of that. And it's like, I feel like we're just scratching the surface. It's like, I don't know how we're going to fit it all into three days, but we've got it all. It's going to be a stretch. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention as with sales, because I myself have personal, uh, personal things with the word sales. You know what I mean? And it's something that I am myself working on getting over. But one way to think about it uh, is you're not selling something, you're offering something. You know, like, here's what I want to give you. Here's what mm -hmm. I can do to help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to give me money for it. But how else am I going to make a living? <laughs> you know I mean? Exactly. And, you know, I'm sure that for many of you guys watching, excuse me, you all, one thing my public speaking teacher, public speaking teacher dinged me on was, is you guys not inclusive enough. So I'm working on that. One thing that we all could work on here is understanding that, that we do also have to make our living. Yeah. And selling mm -hmm. has historically been a way of making a living. And it's not cheap or salesy or weird if you have something that actually helps your audience. So remember that you have an expertise, that you have something to give. Mm -hmm. And if you start with the idea of wanting to give and make something valuable, hence, you know, the value in the book, you know, people already expect and want to pay for it. And the better you serve, people will throw money at you and say, hey, I know this is worth a lot. I'm not taking it for free. How can I pay you for this? Right, exactly. People like do that. Yeah, no, exactly. If you are helping, if you are honestly helping someone, they are going to want to pay you. You know, they, they understand that. And, and honestly, I mean, not, not to, to digress, but if you were offering things at a discounted or free, free price, they're not gonna take it as seriously. Uh, they as they will, they they don't they won't think of it as, you know as I, I say that as we're we're offering a free course. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. It's really worth it's a lot, December. though, guys. It's an extension of December. It's Christmas in January, guys. Plus, it's my <laughs> birthday month, and I love sharing gifts. So yes. we're doing it. Yes, and um, yeah. So another, yeah. I also wanted to just sort of highlight you know, how we are going to, the strat we're going to give them strategies on how to um, market and promote themselves with the book and also promote the book. Um, so that's, it's a lot of fun stuff that we can get into. And I look forward to discussing and imparting knowledge to the people Absolutely. out there. And that's one of the last key things that we almost forgot to mention is that Guys, if, if you register and you show up live, it's not just an opportunity to come and listen to two book nerds talk. <laughs> like there will be built in time. Andre, you're frozen. You said built in time and now you're just frozen. I like your scarf though. 
Come back to us, Andre. Come back. Okay, it appears that Andre is not going to be rejoining us, which is a shame because he left us on a cliff cliffhanger, but maybe that is a good thing. Maybe that will, you know, tempt you enough to come along and, and keep track of, of uh, when we're going to be doing this and register because that is a tantalizing place to leave it, right? Um, all right, anyway, we don't have Andre anymore, but we have a lovely picture of him. And oh, he's gone now. <laughs> so I am gonna just say to everybody out there, well, first off, I wanna thank Andre for showing up and for this discussion I, that I hope people out there find very useful. Certainly I enjoyed it as I always do. And um, yeah, so I wanna thank Andre for, for the time that he spent. And also I wanna remind everybody out there that everyone has a, has a tale to tell. So what's yours? 